What does a piece of ground signify? Place to mow, place to build, place to call home, place to worship. This piece of ground has supported children playing games during vacation Bible school, surrounded families as they played together, provided a piece of stability for a meal and fellowship. This piece of ground did not always look this way. Other buildings occupied this land. People who were not with us today put in their blood, sweat, and tears to make it viable. Other people who now sit with God in a re heavenly realm claimed this rich earth. They gave of their time, their gifts, their energy, and their hard-earned dollars to establish something significant here. Since 1888, this piece of ground has transformed from dirt to grass, to concrete, to masonry and brick, and to building after building after building. But since 1888, the people of God have witnessed some great things here. Weddings, baptisms, revivals, celebrations, puppet shows, moments for learning, and funerals, and tragedies, and times of grief. It is what the church is supposed to be, a place of sharing Christ through our faith and our actions. Thank you for joining us for today's worship. Over the next few minutes, you will see some of the highlights of our ministries. And then we will worship the God who has been here with the people for 133 years and for another 133 years to come.
Good morning. Good morning. A joy to be with you this morning. Um, we're going to be singing an old classic, His Eye is on the Sparrow. And it's not in your hymnal, um, but it's found in the Faith We Sing hymn book. So uh, the words are on the screen, but also can be found in the Faith We Sing hymn book at page 2146. We're just going to sing verse 1. And so I invite you to stand if you are comfortable as we sing uh, the old, this old classical hymn. to sing that one again, you know, it, it, so as it's a, it's a reminder that uh, it is an old classical one, so, uh, but that's fine. Uh, Lori, why don't you go ahead and, and lead us in the, uh, the call to worship here this morning. Would you call, follow me with, in the bulletin? Happy Easter season. Today is the first day of the week. The joy of Easter still mm -hmm. Breathe the breath of new life in your spirits. Welcome to worship this glorious day. Let our lives be testimony to God's redeeming love. Amen. Let's sing uh, the first four verses. Uh, the first four, I think this is actually a hymn where you've got, uh, he wrote about 15 to 20 verses. So, um, and we just have a few in our hymnal. We'll sing the first four verses of Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. now for our ritual of friendship and one of the things that we did last week if you were comfortable with shaking hands with giving a hug please do so now let us turn and, and give uh, say good morning or if you want you can just stay right where you are and just do a wave that's all right uh, and also say a greeting to those on the live stream
Good morning. Wave those on the live stream. And, and just as a reminder, uh, if you have something that you would like to uh, um, let us know, if you are watching at home, you certainly can uh, uh, let us know here on, uh, on the live stream. Uh, we already have one person that said, hold on to your hats, people. Uh, so uh, uh, definitely, um, <clears throat> I just, I, I want to lift up uh, so that we've assessed the damage here at this church. It looks like the, way, the only brunt of the, the damage here is, is our sign in the north. And um, we can replace signs. Uh, but uh, many, I know that we've had folks that well, are without power. Do you have power back in Scotts Bluff? You do now. Uh, but uh, if you're in, in the Scotts Bluff area, uh, Johnson's, did you lose power in Scotts Bluff? You, you did. <clears throat> so gearing, we were a bit fortunate. I don't know if you, if you, had, you, had, you lost power as well. Uh, so we lift up uh, many of the folks, especially on the north side of, of the county. Uh, I know that, we, that the firefighters were busy this weekend, um, not only here locally, but uh, uh, the um, grass fires down in the southern part of the state, very, very, very scary. So um, it's, it's been a long weekend. Can I, can I get an amen to that? It's been a long, long weekend on that yeah definitely so uh but it, just as a reminder if, if you have uh, something you would like to share i do have access to email and to a text message and also on facebook and so i'm uh, just kind of checking all the messages here um in our calendar uh the only thing just want to lift up two important items this afternoon is our confirmation class and um and then this wednesday is going to be our final all church um movie night and uh, so uh, we're, uh, we invite you to come. Uh, we're going to be meeting from 6 to 8 because the movie is just over two hours. Uh, the Jungle Cruise, just kind of a fun time to gather. We do have popcorn available for you. And uh, so if you want to come uh, for that, we'll have popcorn and pizza. And so we'll feed you uh, just as a great time. Uh, we'll be meeting in the basement because... It's darker, and so it'll be a little bit more enjoyable. So we, we will invite you for that on Wednesday night. Um, let me see. Other joys, concerns, announcements here this morning? Yes, Lois. <clears throat> We're getting inundated with requests for food and gas vouchers. I'm down to one gas voucher. I gave out six in one day, and that's the most I've ever given out. Plus, I turned some away who didn't have driver's license and stuff like that. So um, anyway, if you have time to uh, donate food or pay for gas vouchers, we'd really appreciate it. Okay. And Daryl? Oh. Thank you. Uh, just wanted to let you know I returned from Mesa last night. My wife is out of acute care, uh, still in a turtle shell for the next five weeks for her back fractures, but she's healing, doing well. Appreciate all the prayers and thoughts from the members of the church. Also had uh, dinner with Lauren and Shirley. Shirley's recovering well from her knee replacement, walking without a cane or a walker, and uh, Lauren's getting his eyes worked on, and they'll be home probably around the 1st of May. Thank you for the update, and continue to lift up your wife. Yes. Just to add to what Lois said, uh, we really have a lot of food. Uh, what we don't have is somebody that's been trying to keep the uh, bags filled for Lois. On Thursday, we loaded up a bunch for her, but it's really difficult with her working upstairs to go downstairs and have to pack, pack sacks. And so if anybody has time to maybe do that and to help out with that. So. And, but we have lots of wonderful food. Yeah. So we've got sacks right now, but really is, is it's throughout the week. So when folks come and, and uh, grab a bag of food, uh, we, need those, we need those sacks filled up. One other thing that we noticed when we were filling bags is, and I don't ever want to discourage anybody from bringing things, but the really large uh, containers of the oatmeal, when we only give people one bag, if you put one of those big oatmeals in there, you know, it really fills it up. So it's really, I don't want to discourage anybody from doing it, though. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other thing is there's a really large peanut butter, which the peanut butter we do need. We need that on kind of a going, uh, you know, going all the time. But some of those larger things, and they're terribly heavy. The sacks are heavy. Mm -hmm. So. Thank you for the update. Appreciate it. Marilyn? 
My daughter, Vicki Boucher, is having her right knee replaced tomorrow. Thank you. We definitely lift up Vicki in our prayer thoughts and, and hope all goes well with her surgery uh, on knee surgery. Appreciate it. Others sharing here this morning. Let me just check the, the live stream. Okay. Um, checking the different places. Okay. Um, and we had no, other, no birthdays or anniversaries. Okay. All right. So at this time, um, so one of the things that I did is uh, we had three graduates last year, and so I had the opportunity to, to uh, record my interview with each one. And uh, so right now we're going to watch our third one, and we, lift, we uh, turn it over to the video for Jeremy Cripps. And uh, what are your future plans? Uh, my future plans are to join a full-time fire, de fire department at some point, um, hopefully in the near future, but who knows when that'll happen, so. Okay. Um, tell me what your past was like, and specifically your senior year during the pandemic. Um, it was very tough. Um, my family did have a pretty big loss and, and other families did as well. Um, so it was very challenging. Um, it wasn't easy, but pushed through it and, and we all did the best that we could. Yeah, yeah. You, lost, you lost your grandpa mm -hmm. for sure. I think um, um, it was your girlfriend also lost? It, yeah, you know? my girlfriend lost both her grandparents okay. um, within a couple days apart, mm -hmm. both to the to COVID. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, was your experience more, felt differently than your classmates? Um, not necessarily, okay. um, because most of my classmates had the same things. Um, Everybody could see the impact on on people that lost family members and and people that didn't. I believe that it, it really was hard for everybody, whether you lost a family member or you didn't. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, when the pandemic hit <clears throat> your junior year, mm -hmm. and you were thinking about um, what your senior year was going to be like, what was your first thought? Um, I didn't think it was it was going to change really anything, especially as as much as it really did change my senior year. Um, I didn't really think anything of it. Um, I thought it was just going to be kind of like the flu, you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody freaks out for a couple of weeks and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. um, but that definitely was not the case at all. Um, I believe he was watching over everybody. Um, I believe that God doesn't put more than you can really handle onto your shoulders. Um, even though it was tough, um, I believe that he was there and, and you can still handle what he gives you. Um, I definitely did pray every night um, through the whole pandemic and still do. Um, and I believe that, that that did help me quite a bit, getting through everything. I learned to truly put more faith in God than you should, um, and, and to fully trust Him in what He does.
to definitely be closer to your family, hug your loved ones a lot more, um, and and don't hold anything back. Try to see your family members as much as you can, and and truly take it for granted okay. for what you have. What was your favorite memory in school here? What would be your favorite church memory? Um, just learning everything, building friendships, building relationships. That was my favorite memory. What will you miss about high school? I'll miss my friends more than anything. Um, the homework definitely won't miss that. Um, but I definitely will miss my friends, my teachers, all of that. Okay. Thank you, Shane. Letting us. Uh, interview your son and, and wish him well in his future endeavors. His mother did all the work, so. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Um, at this time, I invite the children to come forward for children's time. Well, this morning, <clears throat> I'm going to be talking about growth, yeah. okay? So that's going to be my focus when I, when I, when I preach here today. And um, so I want to show you a magic trick about growth, all right? So I want you to tell me, what, what can you see, what, what do you see here? Uh, see, see the dime? All right. It, no, I, I just see a dime. <laughs> It looks right, right on? No. You gotta look right here. See the dime. I, I'm going to turn this dime into two quarters. All right? So how much is a dime worth? How much is a dime worth? An adult? They need some help here, grown-ups. Ten cents. Ten cents, okay. And how much is two quarters? Fifty cents. Fifty cents. All right. So I'm going to turn this dime. I'm going to let it grow to 50 cents. All right? So you watching? Watching? There, see? And everyone thinks they don't understand inflation. There we go, I just inflated a uh, dime to two quarters. There we go. So, well, that's the extent of my magic trick there. All right, so, but one of the things that we learn in our scripture, and we're gonna be talking about the Bible a lot, is that there is some sense about growth and also what it means to be alive for God. So are you alive? You, are you sure? How do you know that you're alive? Breathing. You're breathing. Okay, and how do you know that you're alive? Because you're a person. That's right. That's right. So what does it mean to be alive for God? And so we're going to be talking about that, and we're going to be talking about eight different ways to be alive for God. So I want you to really be listening for that, okay? Because we're going to, and we're going to be talking about those different ways. And one of the things that we're going to do is, have you ever taken your pulse? We'll even kind of have you take your pulse and things like that. So, so I want you to be, okay, so you're, you know, make sure that you are alive. You're breathing and you have a pulse. Good job. All right, so you ready to pray? All right, put your hands together. Say, dear God, we thank you for this value so that we are alive for you. Amen. All right, you want to turn and get some candy? Let us pray. We confess that we far too often want proof for everything, O oh Lord. We want proof that someone loves us. We want proof that we can trust in others. We want proof that everything in life is going to turn out all right. It is easy for us to point our finger at Thomas, who was honest about his fears. He had seen so much healing and hope. But those hopes seemed dashed when Jesus died. 
Even the news of the resurrection did not completely lift the darkness from his life. Jesus said to him, just as he says to us, peace, be still. Do not doubt, but believe. Lord, forgive our unbelief. Forgive the many times when we think and act in ways which are hurtful and mean. Heal our wounds, bind up our spirits in the cords of your compassion. Help us to fully place our trust in you with our whole hearts and minds and spirits and souls. For we ask this in your blessed name. Amen. Let us join now in a time of silent prayer. Dear Lord, we, uh, as I said earlier, this has been a long, long weekend. Our thoughts and prayers go out to those who work in the power industry, our firefighters, our first responders. It's been a very long weekend. It's been a busy time. We know that their job is not going to be over anytime soon. And gracious God, we, uh, we lift up our friends, our colleagues, our neighbors, co-workers who uh, will be assessing the damage this week as they go out and look at fences and rooftops and siding and, and all those things that uh, have just created damage. Gracious God, we are aware that uh, some of us are are so much luckier than others. Some have it worse. Some have it better. But dear Lord, I just want to remind each and every one of us here today that in your peace, that as we're looking at the damage and we're seeing something that, that is just before us, that you remind us, it's okay. You will get us through this. It might be what happened this weekend or maybe something that's, that's just weighing on us right now. Maybe it's a, a surgery that's coming up. Maybe it's a, a something that, that uh, we cannot foresee. Maybe it's just uh, some treatments that we're going through. Dear Lord, remind us that it's okay. You got this and you are walking with us. Even when it seems insurmountable. And for this we pray. And we ask that your gracious sense of, of being be with us, especially now as we pray to you, our Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Change my heart, O God. Let us sing this song.
morning, <clears throat> excuse me, this morning, um, we've got a lot of work to do. And with that, we've got some helpers. Uh, where's Dylan? Dylan is one of our helpers. Anyway, so um, they're going to be handing out a, uh, uh, a worksheet for you because we've got different scripture passages that we're going to be sharing. And then when we get towards the end of the, the, uh, the message, we've got some fill in the blank. And so we do have some writing utensils. Um, so we're not quite to that part yet. So I'm going to ask the, the ushers and uh, Phil and Dylan are going to be handing out uh, uh, the little worksheet here, the insert that we have. So uh, just be patient. We'll, we'll get that for you. I, I want to share with you a couple of stories. Um, there is a pastor that uh, met, was meeting with the Pastor Parish Relations Committee for the first time. And so he looked at them and, and said that, uh, um, as your pastor, I will lead this church into the 20th century. And one of the committee members looked back at the pastor and says, a pastor, don't you mean the 21st century? And the pastor then looked at the committee and says, let's take it one century at a time. Now, if you think that I'm uh, picking on you, I now have a sermon that is going to be aimed at my profession. Uh, there's a pastor that, um, at the end of the church, shaking hands, and a little boy comes up to him and says, um, when I grow up, I'm going to give you some money. And the pastor looks at the little boy and says, thank you very much, that, uh, but uh, can I ask you why? And, uh, um, and the little boy looks up at the pastor and says, because my dad says that you're the poorest preacher we've ever had. So what's going on here? Why these jokes aimed at the profession of the church? Well, this whole notion of why is going to get a lot of attention today. In fact, over the next few weeks, we're going to be focusing on why. Why do we have core values? Well, why does it matter? Why does it make a difference? Why is the sky blue? Why does the grass grow? Why is it so windy? Why does milk come from a cow? Why? Why? Now, before you're thinking that this sermon was written by a toddler, I want you to know what we're doing here. We're looking at the definition of our church. We're looking at our core values. What it means, what it makes us tick. Uh, what distinguishes us from a social club, a business, um, even like-minded people. And that really is our core values. And over the next few weeks, we're going to be looking at this why. Why do we call ourselves church? Why do we say things like sharing Christ through faith and action? And why does this make a difference? These questions of why really go to the heart of who we are, of what we believe, and ultimately why we have church. Now I want you to think about this. Why do we come here? Why do we tune in each week? Why do we give up our time? I mean, time is really valuable. Why do we work with all of these people? Why do we give? Why do we give to this building? Why do we give to an institution? Why do we give to people that we may not even know? Why? Well, that starts with our core values. So today, we're looking at spiritual growth and vitality. So already we have the first definition of spiritual growth, a process of shedding a wrong and unreal concepts, thoughts, beliefs, and becoming more conscious and aware of our inner being, or simply inner awakening. The next one is the definition of vitality. Possessing a living faith. Possessing a living faith. Now, from a Christian perspective, we're going to give you some ideas of what this definition looks like. So, Lori, why don't you read our script, first scripture passage for us. The first scripture passage is from Colossians chapter 1, verses 9 through 10. For this reason, since the day the Lord, the day we heard it, we have not 
cease praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. So this is a scripture passage talking about spiritual growth. And the next two that Lori is going to share deal with vitality. Okay. Jane, the next one is James chapter 1, verses 2 to 3. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy because you know that the testing of your faith precedes endurance. And then 1 Timothy. In 1 Timothy verse six, or chapter 6, verse 12, fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Okay. So these, this definition reminds us why. Why this value is so important. Let me share with you an illustration. It's an old Indian fable about a, uh, a mouse that was afraid of a cat. And so a magician took pity on the mouse and turned the mouse into a cat. Well, then the cat was afraid of the dog. And so the magician turned the cat into a dog. And then the dog was afraid of the panther. And so the magician then turned, the, pan turned the, the dog into a panther. And then the panther was afraid of those who were hungry. And so by then, the magician finally do, took his hands up, threw his hands up, and turned it back into a mouse and said, nothing I do for you is going to be of any help because you have the heart of a mouse. So, what is your heart telling you? Do you have the heart for spiritual growth? and vitality. Rick Warren is actually one who knows a thing or two about core values. The now retired pastor sat about church and author of many books including The Purpose Driven Life. In his Purpose Driven Church book he talks about core values. Now he uses the word purposes and he says that these purposes are the driving force of our reason for existence. And when he talks about growth and vitality he first lifts up this scripture passage. Lori? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 2 through 8. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for solid food. <coughs> Even now you are still not ready, for you are still not of the flesh, for as long as there is jealousy and quarreling among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving according to human inclinations. For when one says, I belong to Paul, and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely human? What then is Apollos? <coughs> what is Paul? Servants through whom you come to believe, as the Lord is assigned to each. I plan it. <coughs> Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth, the one who plants and the one who waters have a common purpose. And he <coughs> excuse me, and will receive wages according to the labor of each. <coughs> you got through it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Sorry, all. That's okay. <laughs> so so when, when Rick Warren is talking about this sense of growth and vitality, not only does he quote that passage that Lori uh, just read to us, he then writes this. All living things grow. You don't have to make them grow. It's the natural thing for living organisms to do if they are healthy. For example, I don't have to command my three children to grow. They naturally grow. As long as I remove hindrances such as poor nutrition or an unsafe environment, their growth will be automatic. If my kids don't grow, something has gone terribly wrong. 
Lack of growth usually indicates an unhealthy situation, possibly a disease. In the same way, since the church is a living organism, it is natural for it to grow if it is healthy. The church is a body, not a business. It is an organism, not an organization. It is alive. If a church is not growing, it is dying. When we stop growing, when we stop being vital, we are dying. Core values are not about change, nor are they about something new. They're about being alive. So, I already shared with the kids that we're going to do this. So, we're going to have a simple test here. I want us to check our pulse. Okay? So, everyone check our pulse. Okay, raise your hand if you do not have one. Okay, all right, so... (laughs) Congratulations, you are alive. Okay. So how do we take the pulse of the church? How do we know that the church is alive? This is the why. This is the focus of our core values. And so we got a couple pa- scripture passages. Are you ready, Lori? Yeah. Okay, she's got her... her uh, Uh, Her throat a little bit moist here. So, okay. John chapter 15, verse 4. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Luke chapter 8, verses 14 through 15. As for what fell among the thorns, so these are the ones who bear who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. But as for that in the good soil, these are the ones who, when they hear the word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart and bear fruit in patient endurance. This is the pulse of the body of Christ. When seed falls on good soil, we have growth, we have vitality. In fact, we are adopted into the very body of Christ. This value is so steeped into the very heart of the church that not only is this concept found in the famed lips of Jesus, but Paul writes about it. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 10. The point is this, the one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to provide you in every blessing in it. In, in abundance, so that we, so that by always have enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread of for light, for food, will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Thank you, Lori. This text is about adoption, about being adopted, about being brought (coughs) into the very nature of God. And that means having the Holy Spirit grow inside of us. It's kind of like this story. Um, Debbie Moon is a first grade teacher and so she asked all of her students to bring with them a picture of their family and there was one boy that when he brought the picture it was pretty apparent that he wasn't genetically related to the rest of the people in the picture and so as they were looking at this picture one of the kids kind of looked up and says are you adopted? And before the teacher could say anything, a little girl over here, she said, I know about adoption because I'm adopted. 
And so the teacher thought, well, hey, this is a great teaching moment. And so she looked at the class and she says, um, can you tell us what adoption means? And the little girl goes, it means that you grow in your mommy's heart, not in your mommy's tummy. Isn't that great? Isn't that a wonderful story? Now we know the why. Let's look at the how. How do we check the spiritual vital signs? Now, if you were to go to the internet and type in signs of spiritual growth, you would come up with 46 <coughs> million results. There's quite a bit, and uh, so quite a bit to choose from. So the ones that I'm gonna share with you today, the eight that I have here, uh, come one from a, a, a site that really stood out to me. It's called All Around Jesus. And so the first one is this. Make better choices. First Corinthians. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. So when your spouse tells you, be more mature, they're making reference to this spiritual uh, growth. Okay? Number two, have better character. So we are ambassadors for Christ since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Your character distinguishes you from others. This is a combination of not just our temperament, but of our morals, our ethics, and our values. When people talk about you and me, do they say, that's a person of integrity? When people talk about us, do they say, I see the reflection of God shining right back. Growing spiritually, according to John Wesley, is a term that he used called imago Dei. In Greek, it just means image of God. Is the image of God reflected back in your character? Number three, love for the things of God. Now, um, this website did not include a, a scripture passage for this, but that's all right. I think we can understand uh, an illustration here. What are we passionate about? When we work in the soup kitchen, do we see it as drudgery, or do we do it to honor God's children, especially when they smile right back at us? When we work in the church, do we see it as joy, or do we say, oh, work, we do this as a favor to the pastor? Embrace evangelism. And he said to them, go into all the world to proclaim the good news to the whole creation. Since I'm moving to Montana, I gotta get my Husker illustrations in. So I'm gonna give you an analogy of Nebraska football. Let's just say that the person next to you offers you <laughs> tickets to a Nebraska football uh, a game. How would you respond? Well, a couple years ago, you would probably be beyond elation. Now I realize that there are not Husker fans here. Maybe you have another sport, or maybe there's another team, or maybe it's a concert venue, or maybe it's a band that you would drop everything to attend if someone offered you tickets. Do we share in the same excitement when we come to this church? Do we have the same passion to invite someone to come to church? If we do, we are growing spiritually. Number five, become a role model. Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers, does this incredible thing. He would, say, he would pause for two minutes and he would tell people to think of those who loved you into being. Essentially, he is saying, who are your role models? So we're not going to do two minutes, but we're just going to pause right now. And I want you just to pause <laughs> and think about those who loved you into being or who are your role models. Let us pause. Thank you. Number six, have hatred for sin. 
You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Now, there are many ways to define sin. One of my favorite comes from Rabbi Weiser, who I got to work with when I was in college. And he says that sin is actually an archery term, which means missing the mark. And so every time that we fall short, every time that we miss the mark, he said it's sin. Now, that doesn't mean that we stop trying. Now, I don't know anybody when they're playing darts is thinking, I'm going to quit because I can't hit the bullseye. So what do we do? We keep trying. We keep waking our way towards perfection. When you think about it, it is very Wesleyan. Number seven, perseverance in adversity. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Listen to this quote from that website. Imagine a tree planted in good soil, its roots embedded deep, not shaken by the wind, in a solid foundation. Now think of it about the trees that are planted here. Do you think that they show adversity? Yeah. So the whole idea is to have your roots run deep. And if you do that, you'll be growing spiritually and showing vitality. And then finally, eight, love for others. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. The other day I was visiting with one of our parishioners who has since moved to another community. And she was telling me about the church that they were attending. And she said that someone in the church that, where they're going now pray, asked for a prayer for Vladimir Putin. And she said that you could almost hear a pin drop. And then the prayer was that he would have a change of heart. But it got me thinking. Have I prayed for Putin? No. I, I've said some choice words about the man. But growing spiritually means having a vital sense of Christ within me, and it means doing some things that I may not like. Yet these are the signs, the pulse of the church, and with it the people that make it alive. So the whole idea is that once we know the why, we can focus on the why, on the how, and then be able to share Christ through faith and action. One final story for you. There was a uh, new United Methodist pastor that was uh, appointed to a community in Montana. And in this community in Montana, there was uh, just a Catholic church and a Jewish synagogue. And so the priest and the, and the rabbi invited the pastor to go fishing. And so they're about 50 yards out away from the dock. And, and after, after they're out there, the, the rabbi remembers that he's a bit thirsty, but the cooler is on the dock. And so the priest says, well, that's no problem. And he gets out the left side of the boat, and he walks to the dock, gets the cooler, and he walks back to the boat. And then as they're sitting there, the, the priest gets this really large trout, and they look over, and there's the net on the dock. And so the, the rabbi, he gets out the left side of the boat, and he walks over the dock and gets the net and brings it back. Well, the priest is having a hard time getting that fish off, and they notice that the, that the, uh, the knife is on the, on the dock. And so the pastor says, hey, I'll get it, and he gets out the right side of the boat and sinks right up to his eyebrows. And the priest looks at the rabbi and says, if we're going to help out this new pastor, we better sh start by showing him where the stepping stones are. <laughs> I hope that I have given you and I've shown you where the stepping stones are to grow spiritually and for this church to be a vital part in this community. Amen. I'm going to turn things over to our ushers. And um, this is the how. We've been talking about the why. Why do we give? This is the how, so we can give back to God.
we give? Dear Lord, we, uh, uh, we are reminded of how you watched over us this week, especially on a very difficult weekend. Maybe it wasn't re- weather related. Maybe it was something else that, that just kind of caught our mind. And, and um, you've given us the how to give thanks to you and to give back to you so that we can continue to be the church that continues to be our core value, to make us vital, to allow us to grow spiritually. And for this, we are thankful. In your name we pray. Amen. Let us uh, read together a benediction. Let the trumpets sound. Let Let the voices be raised in celebration. I'm ready to go into God's world with joy, knowing that God's love goes with me. Be at peace. Amen. Hymn of Promise, hymn number 707.